Say, kids, what time is it? It's kind of like watching TV, but, you know, in your car. 104.7 The Cave, Mikey Intern, go. Jay there Stevens in the studio. It, it is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 87. Woo! You'd think by now we'd have a hang on this, but no, you know, no, not at all. Just like it's like anything always, we do here in the cave. The house of cards. We're just trying, it's to, always a house trying of cards. to keep this ship floating. And that's as long as it best. works today, hey, that's all that matters. And then we'll deal with it tomorrow. I'm Mike the Intern. This is Jay Stevens. And this week was my pick in our. 87th episode of Dark Side of the Stream. It is a documentary on HBO Max called Fireboys. Yeah, fi- it was um uh, good. It was a good good story. Uh, very interesting. I'm 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 glad something like this uh is out there. Um it tells a story of a place in California called Pine Grove where uh youth uh between the ages I'm assuming of like 18 and 21, maybe the early 20s um can go to essentially train to fight uh wildfires in california they do well with if this you're locked year. up if the kids if are locked, locked up, up in, yeah. in prison yeah. right and we're talking i mean they go around the room in the beginning and they we're talking about violent offenders here we're talking about attempted attempted robbery carjacking shooting carjacking, smugging murder, attempted murder uh big time stuff so you apply for it that you get to meet with counselors and then if you get it, you go and do uh, your, you're basically Cal fire, but you're, uh, you know, you're working off your restitution and we'll get into all that stuff um, and the story. But and you can uh, get your time, your sentence yeah, your shortened, sentence is shortened by doing bit. this. Uh, most of these kids only have a couple of years left. So it's they basically get to be in the program for a couple of years and then they get out. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, before we do that, though. The worst punish. Okay, now, now, little little asterisk here. Jay and I are both, you know, middle class white kids, right? So, it's a little bit different of a situation for when kids like us get in trouble in what we do as kids, because most of the time with us, it's just boys being boys. But it's sometimes idiots, right? when you have a different situation, it's not the same, and that in itself is a tarnish on the justice system, in my opinion. Well, I think it's also just not everybody starts from the same spot yeah you know what i'm saying yep. like yep. some of these kids stories the dad's incarcerated yeah the, oh, all the brothers bro- yeah. oh yeah dude there's one like, that one kid is like my dad's been it, in and out yeah, my brother's like, got life my you, younger brother's got 15 years you can't it's not always just just pull yourself off your bootstraps yeah. and go some people start from a negative yeah starting and that and that that's the only way they feel that's like right. the, their way out which is unfortunate um but again back to what i was saying uh, just you know, for a couple of white kids that were middle class, uh, what's the worst trouble you ever got into? Drunk and skateboarding off of a cop car. Ooh! And then when we finally, when the cops chased us and we got caught, I had throwing stars in my back pocket. A couple of Chinese throwing. Stars oh in my no! Back so you're carrying? Well, I guess I don't. I was just being a dumb kid, but. Yeah. So, so did they lock you up or what? They took us in. Uh, my buddy, who was very intoxicated and was a much more troublemaker than I was, uh, was quite a spectacle. And uh, he stayed a little longer than I did. I, basically, they pulled us in and uh, said, who can we call? I'm like, uh, you guys can call my mom. you know. And so my mom came to pick us up. She was the coolest mom of them all. And uh you know, my buddy stayed the night there uh, entertaining the cops, I would assume, all night long. Uh, he, he had a hard run. Oh, man. He was trying to fight them all. Where you is know, he? Oh, and, really? Oh, yeah. We were talking high school right here? High school. Going into 10th grade, I think somewhere around that range. Summertime, yeah. Damn. In LA. In LA yeah. Damn. Yeah, we thought they took our friends, so we thought we decided to jump on the cop cars and skateboard off the top um, and flip them off. And, Not a good and idea. And then run. And then... Uh, <laughs> They were faster than us. Yeah, even on skateboard. <laughs> Terrible. You know, I was a pretty, I was a super good kid, but yeah, that was the worst thing for sure. Define super good. <laughs> any trouble? I'm just kidding. No, no, no fights ever. No, no trouble. Just I was a chill kid, except for except guess, for that, that incident, night, that fateful Fourth of July night. Uh, the only time. Well, my turn. Um, we were going to see Radiohead in Colorado. Got popped I seventy. Uh, a little bit less than an ounce of marijuana. I went to jail for the night. Woke up the next day. Uh, my buddy was, we were seniors. <clears throat> I just turned 18. So I went to jail. He went to um, juvie because he was two weeks shy of being 18. So he had to wait for his grandparents to drive all the way oh, to the middle of Kansas. Joaquini, Kansas, stand up. 
is where it happened. And uh, I went to jail, <clears throat> got released, didn't know where he was, didn't know where the car was, figured he was in trouble. I was going to have to go back home. So what did I do? I called my cousin Lace in Denver and said, hey, I just got arrested. I'm still wanting to go to this concert. Can I just stay with you? She said, I'll pick you up at the bus station, walked to a gas station, bought a bus ticket, jumped on the bus, went all the way to Denver. Wow. She picked me up the next day. Dude. Partied with her and her girlfriends all week, saw Radiohead at Red Rocks, got on the bus, went back home. Now, the jail portion, it wasn't great, but it wasn't, I wasn't like, I was more mad about how the whole thing went down because it was stupid. And it was actually a legal search and seizure, seizure. So we got it dropped. I only had oh. to pay, I only pay court costs and, nice. and it was off my record because it was dirty how the whole thing went down. It was, we weren't doing anything wrong. Of course, we had that. It's legal now. It is what it is. It wasn't legal then, whatever. It is what it is. We weren't doing anything wrong. We really had no reason to be pulled over in the first place. That's a whole nother story I'm not going to get into. But what I am going to say is the punishment that I got out of that was having to sit on a Greyhound bus oh, yeah. sold out from Denver to Kansas City. That was the worst thing. That was the worst punishment. That was worse than going to jail. Okay, well, there you go. You Horrible. Served, you served your time. It was a 20, 24-hour bus ride, and it was awful. And, well, that's diehard. You should again, you should like email Radiohead and tell them about the story. Nah, that's diehard fan, they know bro. Me. They that's know me die by hard now. Fan. I've seen them seven times, but yeah, it is that's diehard die fan. fan, bro. Anyway, uh, those are light sentences compared to what these guys got, and we'll talk more about that next. Dark side of the stream on one hundred four point seven, the Cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. Dark side of the stream, episode eighty-seven, discussing. Fire Boys on HBO. So we've come clean on our worst offenses yeah. and the time we spent in the slammer. You know, these kids, though, it's 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 good. It gives them an option. Yeah. It gives them some form of light at the end of the tunnel, which sometimes that's all somebody needs, man. So you know? it starts with basically two stories. You've got the kid who is about ready to graduate from the program. He'd become a captain. They called him the first man. And he, he, was a really, the, he, he did a really good job, he, it seemed like. He wanted... They, it, blows my mind that at the if spoiler alert spoiler if, alert. if if at the at the end of this this kid, he should be able to just go get a job with the fire department his ass off he the guy said he and, did a great and, job there and there was his captain yeah. was like I, out of years and years and hundreds of kids there's one kid that i i would stick my neck out yeah. for and that's this kid and they tried everything they could to get him in cal fire even but because he had a violent offense felony they wouldn't let him in. You were talking about a state that literally is burning that every needs, year that needs, needs guys like this. You got this guy who's willing to work hard for a dollar, and, man. And he, like at, on after they were towards the end of the documentary, they were talking to him on the phone, and he was working security, you know, making ends meet. And he goes, "I would give up everything I have right now and go back free. to making one dollar an hour to go back and fight fires." Yeah. And the state of California says, "Sorry." That's, that's they on need your record. To, they need to that, work that, that needs to be changed. They need to work that. If the kids go to that program, they should literally be put into jobs right when they get If, out. if they mean, show that they had done right, what they're, if they're supposed if to they're do, right? If they're doing a good job and they've turned their life around. Dude. Now, granted, um, they did have another guy who had gone through the program and was actually currently working Cal Fire, and he showed a lot of these kids what they could do to yeah, go into it. Force department, he and, and yeah. yeah, yeah, and so he again with the other dude who couldn't get in. It was also on him too, because he had been in prison for like four years. He didn't want to leave his family and they had had jobs available he for did him. Have some jobs he there. just had to move uh, and he didn't want to do it. Yeah. So, so he should have, yeah, I should have. I bet the mentality of, I don't want to work. I'd work for a dollar a day if I could work here, but I don't want to drive two yeah, hours away to work. That move, was kind of, yeah, move. I get it. I feel yeah. bad for you, Chewy, but at the same time, it's like, dude, if you really want it that bad, you're going to be driving home every weekend to see your family. That, that's that's some hard work these kids are doing, oh, man. Dude, like, right? Digging that dirt, hiking Digging with all dirt, your right equipment, fire the flames, gear. like the heat. Dude, and those hikes are brutal, brutal, brutal with just packs on your back, let alone yeah. fire gear. But they did it, and they risked their lives for it. And we'll talk, talk about how much they actually get paid to do it next. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7. 104.7, The Cave, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens. We're back in the studio. It's Dark Side of the Stream, episode 87, discussing... Fire Boys on HBO Max. So, um, yeah, we we met these two kids, one that was going into the program, one that was about to graduate. And it was interesting at the beginning because with the kids going in, you know, they show them what they're going to have to do. You get them training. They're like dying, you know, running laps, oh, all this ooh, stuff. They're ooh. not used to that. 
but it's the trainees the trainers job to get them ready to go fight their go fight fires and if they're not prepared physically they're going to die yeah. it's a fact and they don't mess around i mean this is a privilege to go do this and they got two kids at the beginning that go in and they're they're training them and they're doing the cpr stuff and one of the kids gets mad and a bad attitude, because yeah. she makes him do it again and he cops an attitude and that it wasn't a big deal he just goes you want me to do this again he kind of had and that a crappy was attitude, but though. he did yeah, and the other guys right could thing. see it too yeah. and you could hear it see it in their eyes when yeah, he was talking like, to them okay. like they're like dude shut up bro just keep your mouth shut and do what you're told if you want to be here nope. he was gone by the end of the day the they don't to, mess around back they prison. they kicked his butt back to the correctional facility and that was it no question but then they stayed on with this dude and he bust his butt and by the end of the documentary he became he was a chainsaw guy he became the first man right? yeah yeah, yeah. and so he was basically going chewy. down the path yeah. and doing what he needed to do um so it's a really good tale of redemption um and again you know you're giving these kids an opportunity to do something with their life that they can feel some sort of purpose for a lot of the times these kids the reason they get into what and rather than staying lost. in a little cell they're in a pretty chill environment yeah i mean you it's know? just like a camp it's like summer yeah, camp good food place. You know, better food, right? Better yeah, food, that burrito they that they made, that massive Dude, huge burrito, right? I, I would definitely they threw have, everything oh. inside, and I was like, "What is this?" And then I'm like, "Okay, I, I bet that's probably pretty good, it actually." Was, I know it was, it, it macaroni was and cheese, indeed. flaming Cheetos, yeah. like everything inside that burrito. Tips. Uh, so yeah, um, but when you are sentenced to a, a crime like carjacking or uh, attempted burglary or whatever, sometimes you have to pay what's called restitution. And it's a lot of money in some cases, thousands and 20 thousands. grand. Yeah. yeah a lot of money. Yeah. And you are, uh, you're all, and some people probably think, well, how the hell is this guy going to pay 30 grand, 50 grand they usually in restitution? Don't. Yeah, they usually don't. Well, the, if they're in the justice system, they will because they'll get a job, whether that's making license plates or in this case, fighting fires, you get paid a wage, but it's not like minimum wage. And in this case, these kids, they get paid a dollar an hour to go fight fires. And that goes towards their restitution. They get some of it back so that they can buy flaming hot Cheetos and make giant burritos. And a lot of times, but, yeah, they go half, half, half yeah. to restitution, half to them. And then they're, they're getting a dollar an hour no matter what they're doing. If they're doing the cleanup work on the side of the road. or But if they fight a fire, for each time you fight a fire, you'd get eight days credited off your sentence. So the more fires you fight, you can rack up the eight. And they were all off. every time it happened, they were ready to go. They yeah, they were pretty excited to go. They yeah, to do it. Some they of them, some of them it. were all in on yeah. like. Yeah, and it was it it's it was it was like I said, it's it's a really cool story of redemption. It was hard to hear what some of these kids were yeah. involved in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some of them Sad. were thirteen when 13, they got started yeah, doing this stuff. Doing crime and it's just unbelievable. Um, but it, it it's cool that this thing exists in California. I know. Um, it definitely has its flaws. I wish they had it like a like it was almost as if once you reach the end, it's like, okay, good luck. And I yeah, I it think it should be a better support if, on if, the way if out. If this is about rehabilitation, there should be like a little bit more follow through. At job, least just give them with a job, the state. You know? Cause you you saw it in the trainers and the guys they were fighting fires with. They, they love these guys. I mean, they treated them like they were just like on the crew yep. with them because they have to. They if you're became, in, yeah, they became certified basically as the same certification as yeah. firefighters, you and know. If, and if you if you're you're talking about putting your life on the line, you want to make sure everyone's on the same plate. And they definitely did a good job with that. I think the state fails them in the sense that once they get out, there should be a way for them to continue doing it if they want to. If they don't want to do it and they want to yeah, go do right, something else, right, cool. That's right, great. Right. You, thanks for your help while you're here. But you know, a lot of times I think the follow through with this was uh, definitely lacking. And I mean, the pay is definitely some point of contention. But you know, you're in you're in prison and you're getting paid to do something and time off. So in essence, there's an argument there too. But I, my, my biggest thing was the, the follow through after you got out. Cause some of these guys, I, I, I want to fire as my firefighter. Yeah. You watch them work. Dude. They've got the skills. They know what I mean, to do. Why, why not? You know, I mean, it is what it is. Weird, we'll talk man. about how many uh, fire suits or fire helmets. We give this documentary next dark side of the stream on 104.7, the cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio one more time. Dark Side of the Stream, episode 87, Fireboys, HBO Max. So how many forest fires would you give this documentary? How many uh, How many macaroni and cheese, ramen, flaming hot Cheetos, <laughs> chili Burrito burritos wheels. am I going to give this one? Uh, <laughs> we got to do this ourselves. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go a three only because it was very slow moving. It, you told me how long it was. I couldn't believe you. I thought it was four hours long. It was it was all right come on let's just pick up the pace a little bit guys please but the story 
was it very interesting and I'm very glad some a program like that exists. Again, I wish the exit strategy was a little bit better. Hey, uh, did you catch the name of the guy who uh, wrote this thing? Dickler? <laughs> or produced as it or whatever. As, no, it was directed by, uh, directed directed by, yeah, directed by, by. Drew Dickler yeah. on there. I was like, oh, poor kid. How am I going to forget oh, that? Oh, poor kid. That's so funny you caught that too because I was like, you got, hey, Drew Dickler, if you're listening, man, great. Hey, shout great. out, man. Good I'd job, you, dude. I'd give you a, a solid four. Okay. Solid, solid four, four right. uh, mm -hmm. uh, giant trash bag burritos. Um, but like, yeah, it, it was – because you know this was a labor of love. This wasn't something that they just shot over like six months. I mean, it was a years in the making type of thing. Um, and, you know, they had to go. They had to hike with the dudes when they were doing their fighting. And they had to go some not so nice places. Some gnarly, and, yeah, some gnarly scenarios, and, man. You know, Fire I, takes a turn. It, you got to get in the trucks and go. Quick, it's a go, story, go, 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 go. It's a story. We all know about the wildfires in California and how that I've state's seen burning. Them. I've seen them firsthand, man. Um, but, like, what goes into fighting him and what these guys do and bring to the table was definitely admirable, in my opinion. So watch it if you got HBO Max. Definitely worth your time. And uh, Jay's turn is next for Dark Side oh, of the Stream. What are we boy. listening to? Oh, what are we watching? Excuse me. You know, I was going to go with something new, and I decided to go with a throwback because I just happened to see the title uh, written down somewhere recently. We're going down an avenue we've never gone down, and it's a wacky street. It's on Hulu. Wrinkles the Clown. Didn't we do this one already? I don't think we did, did are we? Are you sure? I don't know. Are we, are we sure? Didn't we? Oh, no. Are you sure? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to look this up. We're oh, going to no. look this up. I just thought there was no way we did Wrinkles. I think we did. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on gotta go back this is why this is why mike keeps this everything the, by mike no this may have been one where we decided to do we were gonna do it okay perfect but then wrinkles. we decided like there was wrinkles. like I, I saw something or jay saw something wrinkles a lot of the times, clown watch and, yeah a lot of times yeah. we'll call we'll it midweek because hey, hey, something's so whoa, whoa, whoa. amazing there, or topical yeah there's yeah. something we gotta do this one so that may have been all wrinkles right wrinkles well, the clown watch I, the trailer yeah. the trailer alone will freak you if out you've not seen wrinkles you need to check it out did you see it mike did you watch okay yeah i'll rewatch it because uh yeah, it's about a creepy clown that parents can hire to scare the kids if they're acting bad. And he is a creepy clown. Yeah, he is. Uh, it's a creepy story. And if you pay this guy, uh, you're kind of creepy too. Uh, yeah, as right? always, <laughs> uh, you can stream these live on YouTube, Facebook, every Thursday at 9. Download it as a podcast or listen to us live every Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Or we can come over to your house and just hang on and talk with you for an hour as well. Get baked, make trash yeah. bag, burrito, bag burritos, and watch documentaries. Dude. We need to not, sell that. We bad. need to figure out how to that sell that. That could be the a winning win. Win get to watch win a Mike documentary and, with we'll Mike and Jay. With Mike and Jay, and we'll get make to come to your house and watch a documentary. The worst house get worst roommate ever, <laughs> Mike and Jay. Dark side of the stream. I'm Mike the intern. This Clothing is Jay Stephen reminding you that we watch, watch movies, documentaries. so you don't have, have to. to. It's Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The Cave.